Today I'm going to be doing something that I don't normally do on the channel and this time I'm going to be adjusting and tuning a carburetor from scratch in this video. Welcome to the nightclub guys, it's your host the Night Rancher. Some of you guys might remember this carburetor from a couple videos back, it is a Demon uh, 625 it's essentially a 600 with down leg primary boosters which gives it the extra 25 CFM I guess for it to flow a little bit better so I initially thought it actually outflowed the 650 in terms of CFM but after I took it apart and measured everything I realized that it's closer to a 600 than it is to a 650 what's interesting about this carburetor is because the way it's chamfered and set up I do tend to require more fuel to get it up and running. The first time I set up this carburetor, I just did a basic rebuild, no fancy parts, just stock rebuild, threw it on the truck, and this thing ran awful. It ran really, really bad. So this time around, I'm gonna go ahead and try to tune it. What I did this time, I went ahead and I installed the 50cc accelerator pump. I also installed the adjustable metering block that used to be on my 650. I went ahead and pulled out the stock metering block for the Demon, installed the metering block for the 650, and we're gonna see how well that runs. Uh, this is a four corner idle carburetor, so I went ahead and set all the idle to halfway out. On four corners, I like to go halfway out on everything before trying to start it. And on two corner, or the ones that only have the front idle, I like to go a uh, full turn out instead of a half turn just so I make sure I have enough fuel to get it going. So you want to go ahead and give it more fuel and back it off than try to take away all the fuel and try to add it later because it's going to make it really difficult for you. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, before we start tuning, we got to go ahead and set some ground rules. Always remember that all of our tuning is going to be done with the engine completely hot carburetor heat soaked and everything normal operating conditions like if you were to go on a trip or drive it to the store that's how we're going to be tuning the carburetor because you don't want to tune anything while it's cold because the cold settings end up changing as the engine gets warmer you can set it up so that it's always running good when it's cold but as soon as it warms up it's going to be out of tune so we tend to be running the engines warmer than we do colder so setting them up when they're hot is going to be the best bet Second thing, you're also going to want to set up your fuel pressure. For the Hollies, you're going to want to have it anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5 PSI. Uh, if you have it lower than that, your engine's going to tend to want to run a little bit leaner because it's going to dip faster than it can supply it. And you might run into some fuel starvation issues if you go up into the higher RPM. So you want to always keep it at a good fuel level and also make sure to set your floats appropriately. I set mine at the bottom of the sight glass and then as I'm tuning I will either want to richen the whole curve in which case I raise it a little bit or if you want to lean it out a little bit you want to go down but it doesn't richen it by much maybe 0 0.1 0 0.2 AFR all the way across the board uh, and that's pretty much fine basically the principle behind that is that the fuel sitting inside the bowl has a specific gravity and the more fuel you got in there the heavier it is the less fuel you have in there the lighter it is and if it's heavier it's going to push the fuel through the carburetor easier than when there's less fuel so that's kind of like the principle between that and again we're only going to adjust to idle because we need this thing to idle right now when it's cold and to run when carburetors are cold they tend to run bad anyway so i'm not really going to worry about any kind of cold start issues at all right now especially since i don't even have a choke hooked up so that's the least of my worries and also the last thing that we're going to be adjusting is the accelerator pump arm that's chilling right here uh, if it's a double pumper you're going to have two arms you're typically not going to have to adjust the second one but the front one depending on where our idle is going to end up then at the very last step we're going to adjust our arm on the accelerator pump which is just either two three eighths or two seven sixteenths wrenches and then you just go ahead and remove the play off of that so all right it's gonna need a little bit more fuel
All right, let's try this again. There we go. Now we are actually idling. Uh, one thing you guys will note is that when a carburetor is cold, it'll tend to run rich. And as it heats up, it'll want to run lean. So you never adjust your idle when it's cold. The only reason I adjusted it now is because I needed it to start and I needed it to idle. After we get it on the road and going and getting it all warmed up and letting it heat soak, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the, the idle to get it where I want it. Right now, it looks like it'll run fine and I can get it on the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off. All right, guys, try to bear with me because there is a lot of wind noise. I'm in third gear, barely into the throttle, so I'm in the IFRs or the transfer slot. Basically light load, light throttle. And what's going on right now is that my AFR is hovering in the high 10s, low 11s. That's telling me that my IFRs are too big. The jets I have in it right now are 71s. I'm probably going to set them down to 69s and go from there. I'm gonna be setting up my idle at the very end because since I'm gonna be changing the IFRs, that's gonna change the ratio of my idle screws. So every time you mess with the IFR, you're gonna to have to reset your idle. So I'm not gonna be messing with that until the very end. All right, so I've got two metering blocks here. The one on my left is the stock Demon metering block. You can tell that it's billet aluminum, but everything on this is non-adjustable. Eventually, I'm going to be drilling it out and installing uh, custom plugs so I can get everything dialed in. But for now, I'm going to be working on this one. Uh, this is a standard aftermarket adjustable metering block. I don't know a specific brand. Um, the ones that I would like to use are these pro systems ones that I have laying around uh, But I can't seem to be able to use them because the way the Emulsion holes are set up they're too big for my application and also they use kind of a funny size for all of the um, PVCRs and IFRs and such so I won't be using this one today as I was saying on the road This is the metering block I'm gonna be modifying and I've got my IFRs located up here I've got my emotion holes located on either side. I've got my PVCRs set up right here. And I've also got the main jets on the opposite side right here. So I've already taken the liberty of taking this halfway apart. So these jets, I'm going from a 71 to a 69, or basically two 71s to two 69s. I've got my 8.5 power valve already set up. Uh, originally I had a 6.5 uh, that's actually in this metering block. And the 6.5 was actually giving me fuel a little too late, and I was leaning out at part throttle. So the 8.5 seemed to fix a lot of my issues. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to pop out the PVCRs, the IFRs, and I'm going to readjust my emotions. So I can go ahead and dial this in. I've got it pretty much all taken care of. The only thing I'm missing are the two plugs for the emotion holes that I've got to drill out and install. So the middle, the top, and the bottom are plugged. The second one is going to be a 26, and the fourth one is going to be a 28, and it's going to be mirrored to the opposite side as well. My power valve restrictor channels, I found that they were a little too small. I went from a 20, I went from a 25 to a 30. My idle feed restrictors, I went from a 32 to a 30. And like I said earlier, I'm going from a 71 to 69 size jets. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. I just got to throw my power valve back on. And I should be good to go. Hopefully I've got the tune pretty much squared away. Alright, so I've got it all back together. Uh, let's see if I can go ahead and get this started. Let's put the e-brake on. Put it, take it out of gear. All right, two pumps, and let's do this. All right, definitely running leaner. 
I gotta keep it on with my foot. I'm gonna have to readjust the idle like I said before, but I think we're in a pretty safe spot. As soon as I get this warmed up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and take it back on the road. All right, I'm back on the road again. I think there's even more road noise this time than last time. I'm actually in fourth gear this time. And you can tell that my AFRs are a lot better in the transition circuit than they were before. We're looking at about 13 and a half to 14 on the transition. And for the main jets, we're looking at low to middle 14s on the main jets. It hovers around a little bit. Whoa, there's a car in front of me. I could probably go back up to 70 jets in the main circuit simply because I'm a little bit too lean for comfort, but overall this is definitely drivable. I'm really happy with the way things are turning out on this carburetor. When I turn back around and climb up this big hill that I'm going down, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at my PVCRs and see if they're in good shape or not. We're starting to get a lot more traffic in this little city, but it's all right. As soon as I get over these cars, I'm gonna be going up that hill again. I can see that my idle is actually a little on the rich side. Uh, you can see right here that it's somewhere in the 12 and a half to 13 range. I probably wanted a little bit higher, maybe up in the 13 and a half range. Low 13s to middle 13s is pretty good. I don't like it too lean because the idle pops a little bit. Shifting with one hand is difficult. Oh, I've got my Hurst shifter installed. Uh, maybe I'll have a video on that a little bit later. But here's a second stop sign and you guys can see right there how the street dips up and that's where we're gonna be trying the PVCRs. All right, so this is gonna be a third gear pull. I think my PVCRs are good, but my secondary jets are going, probably going to be too high. Let's try this again just in the primaries. All right, that was a power valve in the primaries. We were looking at low 13s, high 12s for the primary power valve which means my power valve is probably flowing enough fuel for my primaries and when my secondaries open up I'm getting way too much fuel which it's okay I can I just have to jet down the rears but that's not something I'm going to cover today since I'm hardly ever in the secondaries and I'm hardly ever at wide open throttle so I just got to head back and adjust a couple more things all right I just got back and as you can see my idle's a little high it's around 1200 more or less 11 1200 and my idle AFR is in anywhere from 12 and a half to 13. So I'm gonna need to go ahead and adjust the throttle down, probably down to either 900, 1000 RPMs, cause that's more or less where I like it. And then I'm gonna have to lean it out a little bit. So I've got my idle pretty much where I want it. We're in the low 13s, which is a pretty happy medium. I'm probably hovering around anywhere from 800 to 900 RPMs. And throttle response, still pretty good. So that pretty much does it for today. I will see you all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.